Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Nikki Flores. I'm Monica Deer on Drupal.org and today I'm here with you at the Drupal GovCon launch. And we're at the community forum to have discussion, questions, clarifications from your candidates for the open seat on the Drupal. I'm gonna turn off my audio and then what I'll ask is for each of the participants to give a brief bio, name, pronoun, short bio, and then we have some prepared questions. This meeting is being recorded and this is an opportunity for the Drupal community to learn about your next representative. Now we'll start with, from order on my screen, Matthew, Dominique, Matthew, Dominique, Should I go ahead and start then? Yeah, why don't you while I figure out this? Go ahead. Okay. All right. Uh, my ma my name is Matthew Saunders. Um, my pronouns are he and him. Um, and I always like to start off uh, a, a an introduction with a couple of fun facts about myself. Um, you'll see that behind me, there's a bunch of spade fish that was taken um, about 60 feet below the surface uh, in Jupiter, Florida. I'm an avid scuba diver. Um, and I'm the citizen of three countries. I'm a citizen of Canada, the US and the United Kingdom. Um, as for my bio, uh, currently I work uh, for Pfizer as a, as a uh, business process analyst. Um, I've also worked there as, uh, as an engineer. I've worked at Pfizer for about, uh, for about nine years now. Um, and I've been part of the Drupal community for uh, roughly, roughly 17, 18 years. Uh, for 17 years, I've organized Drupal Camp Colorado. Uh, I co-founded and chaired Drupal Colorado Incorporated, which is the nonprofit that uh, that manages the the event. And I co-founded uh, the uh, D.O. Events Organizers Working Group as well. Um, I was a uh, one of the one of the organizers of DrupalCon uh, Denver, and I've uh, spoke at uh, nine DrupalCons, multiple Drupal camps, including keynotes at Drupal Camp Colorado and Drupal Camp Austin. Um, I have about eight years of board experience. Um, part of it was with with the Drupal Association for about two and a half years, um, chair of uh, Drupal Colorado, as I mentioned, and I was also uh, vice president of Crown Point Academy. Um, and I have an advisory role with uh, with an organization called Next for Autism. Uh, and the reason I'm here is that uh, Drupal has supported my family uh, for the better part of two decades. It's deeply rooted in my identity now. And uh, some of my best friends, supporters, colleagues have come from this community. And basically, you've supported me, and I want to continue supporting you. How about Dominique, and then Will, and then Albert, and then Kevin? Right. Hi, everyone. I'm Dominic. I've been in the Drupal community for uh, almost 17 years now. Uh, started off uh, as a junior developer uh, and then uh, after a couple of years started uh, started Drop Solid, uh, which started out as a, as a Drupal agency, evolved into a digital experience company. Um, I'm also a um, Matic Council member, um, and I'm here to build bridges between the different open source communities, between Drupal, Matic, all open source projects to uh, to support the open web and uh, to sail Drupal into blue oceans um, where it can uh, it can compete on all other levels. Wonderful, thank you. I have Will, Albert, and then Kevin. Hi, I'm Will Huggins. Um, I'm from the UK. Um, I've been in the Drupal community for um, heading towards 15 years now. Um, I work for a company called Suture, which is a Drupal agency that I co-founded in 2009. Um, and um, since then, we've been building um, Drupal development teams, mainly, uh, well, um, I, we're head office in the UK, so we've got quite a big team here, but we also have teams in Brazil and Spain, um, and we work on Drupal projects for clients um, worldwide, but um, people like United Nations, Oxfam, um, so a lot of NGO, not-for-profit, um, gov sector um, clients, 
Um, and um, yeah, similar to, uh, to to Dominique and Matthew, um, I've been um, increasing my uh, involvement in the Drupal community, particularly over the last sort of five to 10 years, um, looking for the ways that I can contribute um, most effectively and where my contribution can add the most value. And um, yeah, I'm really uh, excited at the opportunity to, to give back in a, in a different way as a, as a board member. So much, Will, and then Albert, and then Kevin. Uh, I'm Albert Hughes. I'm here in the city of Houston, which is in the state of Texas here in the U.S. Um, I started developing websites. It's he, him. I started developing websites in 2000, discovered Drupal in 2007. And since 2010, I've had the opportunity to work with Drupal at universities um, for government, both state and federal professional sports teams, uh, at tech companies, nonprofit organizations, and finance organizations. I've worked with Drupal at agencies, in uh, internal marketing teams, internal IT teams, and as a freelance developer, um, as a technical project manager, and currently a product owner at Stanford. Um, I've heard, I've worked with, I've listened with people who use Drupal, edit Drupal, design Drupal, um, and 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 understand the likes and frustrations uh, of Drupal. I've also had the ability to not just work on sites, but a lot recently working on multi-site platforms or single code bases that support hundreds of websites and hundreds and thousands of users. Uh, the reason that I nominated uh, myself to join the board is Drupal has been a, has made a tremendous impact on my life. Uh, it's something that I discovered. It's something that I, I learned and taught myself and, and had friends and, and built relationships and it's, it sustained my family and myself for a long time. And I thought this would be an opportunity to step up, bring my perspective and give back to the community. So definitely appreciate it and grateful to be here uh, with you all today. Thanks so much, Albert. And then I'll have Kevin. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Kevin Quillen. I'm based out of Virginia in the United States. Uh, he, him. Uh, I've been in the agency space for 20 years. I'm in the Drupal community for a little over 16 years now. Um, like others have mentioned, um, I've been working with Drupal since about version 5 and um, have contributed back as much uh, code to the community as, as possible. Um, and I thought that um, you know, last year we we did some big work with you know bringing attention to uh, Drupal with all the AI initiative stuff and helping out this year with uh, Starshot. Um, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to give back to the community beyond just code. Um, so I've signed up for uh, the association. Wonderful! Thank you so much, everybody, for taking the leap and submitting a self nomination. We also want to recognize Jana Malikova as well as Alejandro Moreno, who you can see on their blog posts, which will be linked as well as in the YouTube video from earlier this morning. And so we'll move into our first question. And again, I'll go popcorn style if you feel inclined to answer. The first question submitted from our colleagues in the community is what is your approach to nonprofit fundraising and philanthropy. I think this time, if you can raise your hand, and we'll give folks about two minutes to respond. So, what is your approach to nonprofit fundraising and philanthropy? So, I'll have Will and then Matt. Hi. Yeah. Um, so, um, a company I used in, in the call earlier is um, some work that I've done with um, local Gov Drupal. Um, which started off um, successfully getting grant funding um, from central government um, to basically build a distribution for Drupal that could be used by local councils to bring down the cost of, of building and managing their websites. Um, and that's been really successful and now has transitioned into a phase where it's independent of that funding. Um, so what they've done is set up as a, as a, corporate, as, as a cooperative um, to become uh, a self-funding entity, effectively, and and where it's working really well is is um, it's bringing together suppliers, so agencies like um, uh, the one that I work for and uh, local councils to operate much more as uh, as equals rather than uh, you know in that traditional buyer supplier relationship. So it's a really different way of of funding 
um, and not for profit um, and, and really exciting to be part of. Wonderful, thank you. Matthew and then Albert. Yeah, um, so I've been involved with fundraising across multiple, multiple, uh, multiple nonprofits over over the last uh, twenty years, starting with the Western States Arts Federation, where I worked as an employee for for uh, for eight years. Drupal Association, of course, Crown Point Academy, and uh, Drupal Colorado. And what I've learned in that period of time is that there are some high level tactics that ought to be used by any organization that relies on fundraising for the majority of its uh, operating capital. Um, the first is that you have to have a clear mission and vision, which uh, the uh, the Drupal Association has done very well. Um, the second is you need a donor centered approach. You need to be thinking about what your donors need just as much as what uh, what what you you are looking for. Um, it's really important to have diverse funding strategies. Um, in the past, uh, the the associations has has uh, has relied on on uh, basically two sources: uh, individual individual. Uh, um, uh, memberships, uh, individual sponsorships, and uh, and um, um, larger larger organizational sponsorships. I think that we need to look at how we diversify that more. Um, and uh, some of the other folks in the in the call uh, this morning and uh, and Will just now talking a little bit about uh, some of those uh, diverse funding uh, strategies. You need transparency and accountability so that people know what you're doing with their money, which is super important. Um, and it's important to, to uh, do your fundraising through through data driven uh, uh, techniques using CRMs and so forth. Volunteers are critical to all of this. They hold all of it together. You need to make sure that you're being innovative and uh, adaptable in how you're doing your fundraising. And as a stupid little example, over the last few years, um, Drupal Colorado has uh, has taken old T-shirts that have been sitting in boxes and we've turned them into quilts. Um, which uh, which we've uh, which we've uh, raffled off um, uh, as part of our as part of our fundraising. Um, I think uh, a couple of the most important items also are steward stewardship and recognition, making sure again that you're taking care of the money correctly. And finally, I think that if we can have collaboration outside of uh, uh, outside of uh, the Drupal Association with other nonprofits, that helps a whole lot as well. Thank you so much. Albert and then Dominique, what is your approach to nonprofit fundraising and philanthropy? I definitely agree with transparency, um, efficiency, and making sure once you have the funds are um, collected that they're responsible, you're responsible for them. Um, the two places when it comes to nonprofit fundraising, I have always been a fan of the um, the membership model, um, similar to a YMCA or how we have in the Drupal Association, but also that organizations give value to those members so that members will continue to contribute as part of that fundraising process. And then on the flip side, when it comes to philanthropy, when people are doing, when people are donating, I think an approach is to match large, specifically larger donors with initiatives that align with where they with their values and that they get value from as well. So if you have large scale initiatives, you find donors who you can match up that want to sponsor or put money behind those initiatives, and then make sure you're communicating back to them and providing that value that they could perceive. Because although it is a donation, it is better when there's win-win situations. So those two places when it comes to nonprofit fundraising and philanthropy um, are the approaches uh, that I would take. He's going to have it. And Dominique. Yeah, so um, another angle that, that shouldn't be overlooked is, is that there are also some big grants out there that could fund um, the Drupal project. Um, like one example would be a grant here in the in the EU, uh, the Eurostars grant is uh, is a one million euro grant you can apply for with two different companies from two different member states, and we're doing that with Open Social, another Drupal company, to uh, to build a a major innovation um, to actually add. Um, a capability to Drupal to run it as a, as a DXP, to make it an engine, um, to process structured data also on the user data level. So these bigger grants could help like fund like major breakthroughs. I also know that uh, the Drupal Association uh, got a, a grant from uh, Open Source Foundation in Germany. And for example, also with Matic, we're also applying to Analnet. Uh, it's a Dutch organization who, uh, who 
propose uh, who, who, who provide funding for uh, major open source uh, breakthroughs. So um, yeah, that would be definitely one of the ways that I would uh, suggest uh, Drupal go for uh, extra funding. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna move on to uh, kind of a follow-up is what would be a strategy for recruiting those new members? I know a lot of this doesn't have members, but what's your strategy for recruiting those new members to the Drupal company? Albert. Um, I think some areas, I think in the Drupal community, there's two spaces around when, even when we say uh, DEI or diversity, equity, and inclusion, not just um, develop, like there's a piece of non-developer inclusion and looking at areas where we can recruit more people in the Drupal community who use Drupal and may not contribute in a code type of way. So that approach, I'm also looking at uh, individuals here in the States, particularly black and brown youth in, in college, in high school. So bring doing a way where we can promote Drupal in places where it may already be being used, but um, maybe we don't like they aren't aware or we're not bringing it to the forefront and also partnering with organizations that are in those growth spaces that may, uh, maybe boot camps. There's a, a program, uh, hidden genius project, there's code crew where we could partner with some of these organizations that's working with, uh, areas of growth for the Drupal community, um, to kind of speed up that process to welcome them into, into Drupal. I love that. I know, Will, you probably have feedback as well, being a non-developer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was definitely going to pick up on exactly that point that Albert made, which is, as a non-developer, it's taken me quite a few years to um, really identify where I can add value as, as a contributor to, to the community um, and build the confidence as well to, to, to start that contribution journey. Um, and so that's an area that I'm really passionate about is um, kind of bringing down the barriers to um, people who are, you know, maybe, you know, content editors or, or end users of Drupal or project managers, marketers, um, designers who work in, you know, digital agencies or, or kind of peripheral to, to maybe some of the, the, um, the community contributions that happen at a technical level um, and just really kind of create a, a more welcoming and um, an easy journey for them to start their contribution journey. And, and I think that would add a huge amount of value to, to a lot of the, the initiatives that um, that we're working on at the moment within the community. Yeah, oh, wonderful. Matthew. So, you know, we've got a, this giant community. Um, it's, it's, it's actually pretty enormous. And I think it's a little surprising when you take a look at our actual membership numbers. Um, last I checked, they were 2,488 people altogether um, uh, across the world. Um, and I think part of the problem here is that uh, that uh, we we uh, we lack a ground game at times. So I think that it would be great if we could set up some kind of initiative, centralized initiative, where every camp, every meetup, every con has a uh, membership drive set up. Whereby, when somebody comes to the to the to the desk to to get their badge and uh, and uh, and finish their registration, you just you just sign them up at that point at at the complimentary level, right? It doesn't need to be a paid membership at that point. We can build up to that later on in uh, in 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 the relationship. But to begin with, let's just get everybody who goes to camps, um, to to meetups, to 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 cons. Let's get them all. Um, signed up, so so we've got a better sense of what that uh, what that ecosystem looks like. Um, and like I said, obviously we need some kind of central person or persons to build out that that infrastructure. Um, but uh, but I think the trick here is to meet them where they gather, and we're not doing that at this point. Yeah, I love all the suggestions and uh, the idea that you just sign up right when you go to your local camp. Um, would anybody, Kevin or Dominic, do you have other suggestions, ideas? Yeah, I just remember the 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 first time um, I was able to uh, to contribute myself, uh, whether it uh, with with the first code patch, uh, and uh, Matthew talked about uh, the dopamine hit you got. At the beginning, that's certainly true. Um, yeah, having people get over that first hurdle would be would be a 
like a really good strategy and and i had someone doing that for me so i didn't do that alone so um yeah we should do that and then perhaps maybe i combine it with uh but okay now you got your dopamine hit uh maybe you want to also be a, a supporter of the project that would be a good moment yeah sounds great um, Kevin, did you have any ideas or perspectives on that strategy for recruiting your members? Yeah, I think um, similar to what others have noted, I think there's like three different points, and one's the barrier of entry, which I know uh, the community is working on with Starshot, but also um, the, the 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 membership funds and everything that also helps fund with initiatives like the, um, the GitLab. That we have now all the great developer tools behind the scenes that actually help people um, contribute to drupal.org in easier fashion um, they may not understand that up front uh, making that more clear that you know having a membership helps us uh, be able to provide tools like that um, to aid in that assistance because trying to set up you know gitlab on your own or github on your own has all the same uh, level of detail that we have now in drupal.org is is very daunting um, other initiatives that make it easier to try Drupal, um, ones that Matt Glamon is working on for trying Drupal in your browser, just to get a feel for Drupal if you've never tried it before. Um, it's gonna go a big way. Um, and the community coming behind projects like DDEV and saying, well, if you're a developer, um, here's the one recommended way that you can get started and get started quickly. Uh, that's been a historical problem in Drupal which has been around as long as uh, we have on the call. Uh, and I think a third way is just, um, this might seem out there, but making Drupal cool again. Um, attracting people to the project, they may think, oh, Drupal is 20, almost 25 years old, which is surprising to hear. Um, and therefore, being old makes it not cool or not hip or not capable. Um, and being a developer, I know that those things aren't true. We're getting better with every release and building sites of almost any caliber is getting uh, better with every release. And um, having that kind of marketing outreach that say, hey, um, it's a great, uh, it's, it's good for your uh, career prospects. It's a great tool to have. It's a great community. Um, we're very welcoming, um, and it, we're just we're just cool, and, and making that um, another priority of Drupal as well. This is very interesting. So you know, we talk a lot. I know when I go to the cons, everybody has 15, 20, 17, 10 years of experience, right? And so where are the young people? Where are they coming from? Make Drupal cool again, as Albert says. I guess I'd like to ask folks about this. Uh, if you were to be elected, how would you embed? the principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion into your board seat, that is something on top of mind. And we know that kind of the incoming, the youth, the people coming in generations below us are, there's no one majority and people are very used to very different perspectives. So how would we, how would you embed principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion into your board seat if you're elected? I'll call upon Matthew and then Albert and then both. Yeah, so I, I want to start by, um, like I did this morning in the first call, recognizing my privilege as a straight white male. Um, I, it's given me all kinds of advantages that I, I, I recognize and and uh, and I'm grateful for. Um, I want to sort of give you a story. Um, back in back in uh, 2019 at DrupalCon Amsterdam, I chose to very publicly disclose my neurodivergence as a person with ADD dyslexia and autism. And this continued a journey of advocacy that had started years before while helping my daughter navigate a neurotypical world as a neurodivergent child. So she's not just diverse from that standpoint, though. She's also Hispanic. We adopted her from social services. So she came from a really rough background before, uh, before she came to us. And that led me to sitting on um, a uh, charter school that we that we uh, got her enrolled in, Crown Point Academy, where the student population is largely compromised, uh, uh, comprised of uh, diversity uh, of a diversity of ethnicities. So I've chosen over the last two decades um, str to strive for those who are diverse to have equitable, inclusive positions in our various kinds of societies. And this has ranged from being on that school board to speaking about neurodiversity at uh, various events to advocating for universal design and workspaces 
Um, at Pfizer, I sit on the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Council, and in that capacity, I'm one of the founders of the Neuro Neurodiversity Colleague Community Group. So I've embedded my life with the values of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and I will bring that energy and insight to the association if I'm elected. Thank you, um, Albert, and then Will, how will you embed principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion into your boards if you're elected? Yeah, for me, one of the initial ways for myself and something I can do would just be authentic. I think bringing a uh, diverse perspective from different places, whether that's race, whether again, non-developer, um, I can being authentic and bring my myself and bringing my perspective. Um, I think that automatically will help embed that during my perspective. And then another time, another way is also trying to encourage ways to welcome and sustain not only first time new Drupal contributors, but uh, people from all different places. So um, is there a way to help if you come into the Drupal space, identify where you can fit in and have pathways where you can get there? Because I think a lot of times, sometimes we don't, we get to the party, we don't know if there's anyone who connects with us. So if I have a place where there's always a place where someone can find um, a sense of belonging and then have a pathway to continue, I think that would help with uh, DEI. Sounds good, pathways. Um, Will, and then I'll ask about Strategies. Okay. Well, yeah, go ahead. Then we'll yeah, ask so, about how to welcome sustain their sustainable contributors because it's very committed. Yeah, so the the, um, the area of, of diversity and inclusion that I'm quite passionate about um, and want to focus more on within the Drupal community is um, financially marginalised groups. Um, so quite often there's there's high barriers to participating, um, particularly if you think of Drupal cons as a as a really good uh, and flagship example. Um, if you're not supported by a company, then actually attending, you know, traveling to and attending DrupalCons is a really expensive um, activity. Um, and whilst we have, you know, scholarship programs and, and, and different mechanisms to try and overcome those challenges, um, I think there's more that we can do um, to reach some of those financially mar marginalized communities and groups and individuals um, and help bring them into the community um, and, and, yeah, kind of open up um, the um uh, you know, access to to everything that Drupal can offer to those communities. Yeah, I, I'd like to kind of, this is very energizing discussion. So I, I'd like to ask for uh, the group, in your perspective, what's the best way to welcome and sustain those new first time Drupal contributors? I'm hearing like point of entry, give them the dopamine hit, sign them up as a member. And then how do we continue to sustain first time Drupal contributors? I want to ask Kevin about that. And then anyone else you have to handle. Sure. Um, sustaining uh, first time contributors, um, that's, that's a great question. Um, it's, you know, it's been so long for me to remember back when I was a first time contributor, but, um, you know, having a welcoming community is, is one step. And I think, you know, Drupal community is, um, is that. Um, we can always do better, of course. Um, but just, Again, reducing the barrier of entry to getting to Drupal, I think Drupal has this stigma of being hard and complex and difficult to use. Um, but to couple with that, we have a great community that can help kind of eliminate that barrier um, by reaching out to those new contributors and, and getting them, um, if they're kind of afraid to, to uh, jump in or say, hey, I need help, um, just eliminating that as well, uh, because it can be hard to, um, you know, recognize those people if they're afraid to raise their hand. We don't know that um, they're trying to contribute. And then, of course, providing them the tools in which they can do that without needing, um, you know, all the years of knowledge that it took for us to get to where we are in our Drupal careers. And um, I'll, again, I'll reference DDEV as an example. Um, having a tool like that for people to get started so saves them over a decade of experience required to even installing uh, you know, MySQL, Apache, PHP, all the different tools you need on your machine, uh, whether it's Windows or Mac or Linux to, to get started. And that um, is a big leap to even getting started with developing or contributing to Drupal. Um, if anyone's ever met Randy Fay, he's, he's an amazing uh, community member at these conferences. Um, and he, you know, I always use him as an example. Uh, personally, as I met him in person at the last one, um, 
that he gets you up to speed and going very quickly to whatever your desire is, whether it's working in Drupal or anything that DDoS supports. Um, that would be, in my opinion, is one of the biggest things that we have going for Drupal to get first time contributors in. And then sustaining them through uh, mentorship. Um, if anyone remembers uh, on Drupal org profiles, people used to list their mentors. Um, getting back to a state where we're in that mentor mentee capacity. Um, you know, we're all, all of us on the call are not going to live forever. So it's very important that we help bring in new blood and new input, new ideas to Drupal and then impart in the knowledge that we have from all the things that we've contributed, whether it's modular themes or different uh, software supporting Drupal. Um, and just the ways that we've learned to, to work and develop Drupal is also very important to help, um, you know, carry Drupal forward in a fresh forward thinking way and not just kind of a legacy software way, if that makes sense. Yeah, sounds great. Um, I'll call upon Will and then Matthew and then Albert and Obama. Um, same question. Uh, in your perspective, what is the best way to welcome and sustain new first time Drupal contributors? Yeah, so um, kind of really building on that, which is, you know, we've got this incredible um, uh, group of individuals who, um, you know, mentor that, you know, um, and really kind of bring to life what being part of the Drupal community means. Um, so I think for me, it's about how can we get people introduced to that as, as early as possible? Um, so, you know, right from creating their Drupal.org account, um, I think we could do better in terms of creating a journey where they get an email saying, you know, congratulations, you now have your Drupal.org account. You know, what do you want to do next? Can we connect you with a mentor or where, you know, which areas are you interested in contributing? So we can kind of get people into that journey. And uh, and, and as, as kind of, I think it was Matthew that originally coined it, was the, the dopamine hit, um, you know, kind of get them to experience that early on. And whether that's, you know, their first commit or uh, maybe is participating in an async Slack meeting, um, you know, there's lots of different ways. And, and really, um, as I've found, personally um once you start that it really builds your confidence in terms of actually there is you know there's a place for me here there's there's stuff i can do that's valuable and and i think that's the journey we want to get as many people onto as possible yeah i guess self the following system yeah yeah matthew and then Robert, in your perspective what is the best way to welcome and sustain you first time people can forgive yeah, so I, I'm I'm gonna dig way back to 2007 when I first uh, started uh, engaging in the Drupal community in in uh, in sort of earnest. Um, I just started working for a small agency, and that small agency was headed off to DrupalCon Barcelona. Um, and uh, at that point, DrupalCon was only about 500, 600 people. It was pretty pretty tiny, um, and. Uh, when I uh, when I arrived uh, at the convention center, uh, one of the first people that I met was Angie Byron, and that just sort of solidified the community for me. Right at that moment, she anchored me into it in a way that I don't think I had any chance of escaping. Um, and and I say that in a really kind way uh, because she she was she was unbelievably uh, kind. She made me feel welcomed and valued, and I think that's what we should be doing for every single. Uh, new contributor who's coming into into our community. Um, it's critical to have really clear ex expectations for these new contributors, right? They, they shouldn't feel like there's a ton of pressure on them and they should have a lot of fun. And that goes back to the dopamine hit that everybody's been mentioning that I talked about in the, uh, in the, in the previous call. I remember my first dopamine hit and uh, it, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, elating and that just sort of turned into a rush of, of, uh, of additional uh, contributions to the point where, you know, I've been running a camp now for 17 years because of that. So mm -hmm. I think yeah. that a big part of it is that, you know, that we need to, we need to, we need to make people feel like they're part of the, of the community. And if this community were to go poof, rather Drupal were to go poof and not exist any longer, I know that the friends that I've built here um, would be part of that network, would be part of that that group for the rest of my life. Thank you, Matthew. So for Albert and then Dominique, and then we have some questions from the visitors in the chat. So for Albert, how would you, what would your perspective on the best way to welcome and sustain new first time Drupal contributors, your idea? When I, I definitely think that what Will mentioned around if Drupal.org being an entry point and that's like a, a base 
adding in more places where social connections are there. Cause I think the everyone could agree the social connections of the Drupal community is what makes the Drupal community. And what, what typically keeps people um, is like being able to know there's other people out there doing the same thing we're doing and going on that same journey. So if there's ways to integrate during the onboarding experience, during when you do contribute, Hey, can you connect to these people? I think that's very important. And I, I think when it comes to st also communicating and promoting the different ways you can contribute because a lot of time it's not just code contributions but making sure people know you could be doing documentation you could do QA you could do bug bug reporting so making sure everybody knows you can contribute I think will increase first time uh, contributors as well as continue someone to keep contributing and then uh, to sustain I, I I mentioned it a second ago I kind of jumped ahead but career pathways of like where can you go now? from contributing because I think if if a lot more people knew, hey, you contribute to this open source software, it can lead you to a career. It can lead you to a job and having those stories of where it's happened, even for myself and other people I know from just contributing, they met someone, someone saw that they committed, they used that as part of their resume and, and it added a tremendous amount of value. So I think making sure people understand that Yes, there's a piece of we're contributing back to open source software. It's a community, but this is actual something that has tangible value that can turn into a career. So that's a place where yeah. I, I really think it's important. Thank you, Albert. And then Dominic, the in your perspective, the best way to welcome and sustain new first time group of contributors. And then we'll go into the chat for the remainder. Oh, you're still on mute. Go on. Oh, sorry. So yeah, Albert, exactly the career, the career part is, I think, very important. And um, to make Drupal cool again, I think is also very vital. Um, if I remember all the way back when, when I started to get involved with the web, I was really thinking like, oh, maybe the internet, that could be something someday. And then... <laughs> And then I got in, I got to know Drupal and I was thinking, oh, this Drupal, this could really be something to build some serious website with this. And okay, um, if I think now, if I would be a young person, I would probably be thinking that about uh, everything data and uh, and AI. So bringing Drupal to, to new markets for me, I think is, is really crucial to, to bring in the young people to, to make it cool again. And, and that's why I really think that evolving Drupal from just a, a website platform uh, to, to a DXP, to a digital experience platform where, where user data um, is really baked into it. Um, that will really attract new, young people because they want to they want to do the exciting stuff like they want to see the future and and if you can get data and ai as a as a as a possibility in drupal um that will really help to get them from being web developers to dxp developers or even web masters to dxp masters um that, that... actually dominique i'm going to actually ask you this is very much the same because uh, you talk about DXP. One of the questions here in the chat is, how do you see Drupal integrating itself more into the free and open source ecosystem communities? So, like, continue from your perspective in DXP from Maltic. How do you see Drupal integrating? And then I'll ask for you know, the other folks' opinions on this as well. Yeah, so yeah, I, I saw Ricardo's question and, and, and exactly co connecting these different open source systems, like for example, Matic uh, as a marketing automation platform, which uses data to email uh, users to segment users or, or even uh, more advanced systems like Apache Unomi, who uses um, data to, to really do some uh, advanced segmentation and, and, and data aggregation so you can really build personalized experiences yeah that's that's uh that's what would drive a, a lot of uh, a lot of new adoption um however i think drupal should be capable of of doing that it's itself um we have the community of, of developers and and, and of, of visionary people who can who can pull this off so why not try that yeah it's true Open source, uh, a competitor to our private industry 
perspective, we have the open source version of our content management system. Maybe Kevin or Albert or Will, do you have other ideas, maybe Matthew, on how do you see Drupal integrating itself more into the free and open source ecosystem or communities? Probably there. Yeah, I think, you know, I see it kind of as, as concentric circles almost. So I think the, the, the layer of open source that kind of um, is the, the most sensible to start kind of having a greater integration with and participation with are the ones that that um, end users are likely to want to use in conjunction with, uh, with Drupal um, or providing solutions that we know um, complement content management platform so you know very much the 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 tools that that Dominique mentioned and then I think the concentric circle after that is kind of the maybe more of the tools that um that Ricardo mentioned so then actually the uh some of the communication tools that sort of power the community and how we interact so looking at uh, thinking well you know are there open source alternatives to some of the the proprietary technologies that we use like slack um, and then I think the circle after that is is thinking about you know kind of the, much more widely the technology sector itself and almost and I do see it as a journey. I think you know one one day potentially getting to a place where um, you know within the um, Drupal's approach there's a there is an open source first uh, impulse that says actually you know we won't use the technology unless we've explored what open source options there are and then proprietary becomes a kind of a last resource if we need to. So I kind of see it as a journey through these kind of concentric circles of, of yeah, kind of starting with the most adjacent technologies moving outwards. Matthew, and then if Albert or Kevin, you have opinions, what, uh, how do you see Drupal integrating itself more into the free and open source ecosystem and community? Yeah, so I love the fact that uh, that uh, folks have just talked uh, about the technology side of it. Um, so I'm not really going to talk about that because I think it's super clear um, how how that piece of the puzzle works. Um, to me, open source though isn't just about the software, right? It's about creating a culture of cooperation. It's about transparency. It's about social responsibility. And um, I, I think it's very important for us to remember that uh, that a big part of what we've been doing is uh, is de democratizing technology, right? Making make putting ourselves in a position where where nobody owns it, empowering local communities, and this all sort of ties right back into what we're talking about um, in terms of in terms of contributions, in terms of in terms of how we how we how we operate as a community. And and so on. So I think that one of the things, and and this is this is a, this is an approach that we've taken at, at my little camp um, a bit. I think a good approach is to make sure that you're 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 inviting people to to your events um, that are Drupal adjacent, that are not necessarily st strictly strictly Drupal, and embracing embracing those people into into um, the community almost like their cousins, right? Um, and uh, I think that uh, the more that we can start to to have cross pollination in terms of ideas and and ways of doing things across different open source uh, projects, the better off every every uh, every project is for that. Yeah, sounds great. So, Albert or Kevin, you have some ideas on how you see Drupal integrating itself more into the free and open source ecosystem. I think of if I added anything, it'd be right right on point with what Matthew said and and, and what Dominic is, is doing and looking for ways to actual integrate Drupal with other open source technologies and keep flowing and, and just looking back at the Drupal Association mission around driving innovation and adoption of Drupal as a high impact digital public good hand in hand with our open source community. So I think having that oh, understanding that we want to work hand in hand and we should be working hand in hand with our cousins that that relate and share that same type of mission, um, so I, I I just that that that'd be what I would add that that I I agree with that with, with with what's being said on the call. Uh, again, I I'd have to agree with Albert and and Matthew on all those points. That um, making Drupal you know Drupal adjacent to all the other technology out there, I think uh, the one thing that comes to mind for me uh, as an example is, uh, is WordPress, of course, is almost everyone's greatest 
friendly competitor. But um, as a recent example, there are uh, examples of WordPress actually um, borrowing ideas from the Drupal community as well and plugging them back into WordPress. And I think that we have an impact on those communities um, in that way, um, that even though they're in the open source space and they may be competitive on some angles that we're all in the same uh, boat together. Um, and, and just reaching out more instead of uh, kind of maintaining those barriers of, uh, oh, that's a different technology and they're c competing or it's a different ecosystem. We're all kind of the same open source ecosystem and should uh, act accordingly. Stephanie, did you have a follow on? Yeah, so uh, one of the opportunities I also see here is uh, the fact that we, we are doing Starshot right now, packaging Drupal as a, as a CMS. Uh, I also believe this is an opportunity for the core, um, for the core to also uh, create its own vision, where um, we have more and more capabilities shifting towards uh, towards Starshot, towards the Drupal CMS. This could leave uh, a lot of room for innovation on the core, where the core could actually be used by other open source uh, products um, to build itself on top on. Um, this would even mean that Drupal could serve as a basis for other open source projects, especially if we can get data into the Drupal core natively. It would it would be like a tremendous capability where the others could uh, could leverage uh, themselves and um, yeah create an even more diverse uh, ecosystem. Wow, I'm, I'm excited about the future of Drupal. Let's say 20 years from now, what will it look like? All right, so we do have one final question and then we can wrap with any final statements and the announcements. So the last question asked was, how will you prioritize governance of the Drupal Association? And when we mean you know, governance, how it's organized, how priorities are set, how it's uh, tracking accountability and all the like. So I Take that as a open option for folks. How will you prioritize the governance of the digital association? Well, go with Matt. Yeah, so governance uh, of nonprofit organizations is super important. Um, and it's it's uh, a lot of it is the boring stuff, right? It's not it's not the exciting exciting um, initiatives and so on. It's the it's the uh, it's keeping the engine going. Um, and it just so happens I've got a ton of experience around this. Um, and uh, I was the chair of the government governance committee at the Drupal Association for nearly two and a half years, a number of years ago. Um, and one of the things that I managed to do during that period of time was increase the length of the at-large board position um, terms from one year to two years. Um, and the other thing that, uh, that I managed to do during that period of time is implement term limits for board members to help li limit burnout. Um, during that period of time, I was involved in crafting the association's current mission, vision, and values. Um, and I've engaged in strategic planning for three different nonprofits in the past, including the association, um, helping affect, uh, craft uh, effective long-term visions. Um, and personally, what I would like to do with all of this experience that I have around good governance is to uh, focus on the association's session planning a little bit more. Um, I know that uh, that uh, that that's always been a challenge figuring out how people can gracefully leave and we can gracefully bring new people in and how we can ensure that we maintain a strong and diversely skilled board. Um, and I'd also like to continue uh, focus on the continued evolution of the association's embrace of diversity, equity, and inclusion. I want to focus particularly on the area of neurodiversity. Um, so, I mean, long and short, from my uh, from my standpoint, I would come to this role with an immense amount of experience in board governance and uh, even a little bit uh, within the association itself. Thank you. Well, and then Dominic, how will you prioritize yes. the governance of the Drupal Association? Yeah, so I, I come into it very much from experiencing um, from the community perspective. Um, so I have less experience um, in terms of, of the um, uh, you know, kind of other types of not profit governance. Um, but what I have experienced is um, I think it's sometimes a bit of a gap between um, what the Drupal Association is trying to achieve and the experience of, of the community. And it's not through any kind of um, 
you know sinister or negligent um drive it's just uh just simply a you know i think a a challenge of of managing a, an open source community and a not-for-profit organization um so i think you know what i'd be keen to do um uh, if I was uh, successful to be elected onto the board, is to try and help to shed a light on some of those little pockets where there's inconsistency in governance, um, where the, maybe um, the structures and processes are a little bit op opaque and don't quite make sense to the community, um, and just see if we can iron out those um, inconsistencies and try and get better better coverage, really, of what the Drupal Association is trying to achieve so that it lands um, across the community more harmoniously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sounds good, uh, Dominique, and then uh, Karen, and then Albert, on a question about how will you prioritize the governance of the Drupal Association? So yeah, also because of Starshot and, and Drupal Association is already doing this, um, there is a Starshot Council that could be an opportunity once the, the Drupal CMS uh, has taken full shape uh, to evolve that in a, a Drupal CMS council um, to make decisions on, uh, on, on the Drupal as a CMS uh, product. But the same could also be done if other products are being built uh, on top, top of Drupal together with perhaps other uh, communities even and uh, govern that. You could see like Drupal as a... It needs some extra capabilities, so it's still a bit a uh, bird uh, in the sky and, and a bit more longer term. But but one could see like uh, a marketing automation platform, a CDP being being built on top of the the Drupal core if it has these data capabilities built into it, together with these other open source communities. So having a governance structure around this, how we can connect with other open source uh, communities that, that would be like uh, like really unique. Yeah, like industry-wide. Mm -hmm. uh, how about Kevin, do you have any ideas about how to prioritize the, how will you prioritize governance of the Drupal Association? Sure, I, I think, my answer is probably a little similar to, to Will's, uh, making it clear to uh, members and uh, non-members of what the Drupal Association is doing uh, through uh, greater transparency and why they exist and, and what they do and what they do for the community and why you'd want to be a member. Um, and another another point, or at least a passion idea of mine, um, going back on our earlier riff of making Drupal cool again would be um, helping the association uh, effort forward, uh, a redesign, reimagining of Drupal.org. I think a little bit of that was talked at DrupalCon last year, uh, making Drupal appear fresh and new and innovative in all the in all the ways that we understand it to be uh, to the outside world um, would help go a long way for marketing and outreach and attracting people in Drupal, which is, uh, I believe, one of the missions of the association itself. Um, so that would be my areas of focus. Things that come to mind. <laughs> Yeah. What comes to mind for me is uh, definitely transparency. I think then also being a represented representation of the community as a, a community elected position. I want to be the representatives and spokesperson and bring a perspective for those in the community to the board. And then looking at, again, transparency and the mission of what the Drupal Association is trying to do. I'll just leave it at that. Wonderful. Okay, so... This time we are at four and a half minutes remaining. Uh, if anybody has any final thoughts, please feel free. Thanks for organizing these. That's all, Joy. Yeah, thank you, Joy. Thank you for the Drupal Association for giving us the opportunity to connect with the new representatives. And so I have some announcements. The reminder to everybody to read the candidates blog posts and the voting on this will begin at midnight coordinated universal time on 15th of August. So that is approximately, I don't know, within 24 hours from now. Voting is open to anybody who's a member and membership is for a nominal amount. You can find it at people.org slash association oh boy let me find a way to drop it here how to become a member if you look up ripple makers and you'll see how to become a member voting will close on the 5th of september 
at 2359 coordinated time, at which point the board will ratify that member between uh, 6 and 16 October. And the new board member announcement will be at DrupalCon Barcelona at the public board meeting. Um, I'm just going to look for how to become a member in a moment it's on the Drupal site. We did have a rebranding, so you'll start to see Ripple Makers, which is this idea about contributing on a regular basis or as a distinct from your organization, distinct from everything else. It's drupal.org slash association slash Ripple Makers, which I'll drop here. Please do take a look. And I think without further ado, we will open up the voting to verified members tomorrow. And then we will see one of you in your seat at the DrupalCon Barcelona. Thank you all so much for your participation. And Joy, do we have any other ideas?